How's it going everybody? I recently put out a new post on my blog that's basically talking about the Visioneer uh, cipher and basically how that's an expansion on the idea of like a rotation based cipher such as the Caesar being you know rotation 3 or rot 3 um, and I kind of discuss why um, or how rather the Visioneer cipher works and then I also implemented that in Python. So that kind of got me thinking how can you actually break this, right? There's this talk in the book that I'm reading, Serious Cryptography, about frequency analysis. Um, the problem with classical ciphers is that basically the plaintext and the ciphertext are going to be the same length, right? So if you start to look at words that are very common in the, the English dictionary, such as the or and, you know, they're three-letter uh, words, you start to see those a bunch and eventually maybe you can kind of figure out, you know, what's going on. That kind of thing um, is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. What I wanted to do is actually use something called the known plaintext attack and discuss what happens when you actually have a plaintext that maps to a specific ciphertext. Then you can actually do a brute force against that. Um, so I kind of wanted to simulate that attack here today. And uh, basically my setup is I have downloaded the vigcipher.py file that is on my GitHub, and I've renamed the file vigbreak.py. Um, so there's a couple things going on here. What I wanted to do is actually generate random keys um, and kind of leave myself blind to the key that's actually being used. So I did this, um, basically this uh, keygen.py file, and what I'm doing is I'm going through my alphabet here um, and I'm basically only caring about uh, uppercase and lowercase characters. And then I print a thousand keys with a length of between six and ten. This is randomly selected length uh, between six and ten characters. And then I basically just add that to this list and output that to a text file. Um, so I've done that and that is in the possible keys.txt file right here. And so now what I have done in my vigbreak.py file is I basically created a new function um, that is based on what we found in vigcipher.py, um, but I'm calling that vig encrypt, and what it does is it actually takes a plain text string and then it puts it through the rotation based cipher uh, and then gives us our um, ciphertext. And so what I'm doing in this particular scenario is I have a list of instructions, right? And so I'm going to generate, or rather I'm going to select at random a key for my possible keys.txt file. I am then going to encrypt everything in that instructions file using that key, which is invisible to me. Um, and then I'm also going to print out the first line and just to simulate the known plain text aspect of that. So what does that look like? I know this is kind of a, a, a long-winded explanation, right? But what that actually looks like is um, if I go into my vig folder, right, then I can go over to uh, vigbreak.py and just run that. So I'll do so. Python 3 vigbreak.py. So what you see is basically what I just described, but it's it's much easier to kind of understand at this point. So what I have done is selected at random uh, a key from possible keys.txt, and then I have gone through the steps that I mentioned. Um, so the first thing is to print out our plain text, which is in and out Burger's secret recipe, uh, and then basically encrypt everything else in our file. Um, so what you'll notice here immediately, and this is kind of goes back to what I was saying about classical ciphers immediately having an issue of the plain text and the cipher text are going to be the same length, right? So you can see the in and out Burger Secret Sauce Recipe and this right here are the exact same length. Now, there could be a case where you have multiple ciphertexts that happen to be the same length, and this becomes a little bit more difficult. Um, in any case, the longer your plain text and cipher text are, the less likely that is. Um, but in this case, you know, there's only one that appears to have the same number of characters, the same spacing, the same number of words, and that whole thing. So basically, we can start our attack with this, right? Our known plain text is in and out Burger Secret Sauce Recipe, and the mapped ciphertext to that is this right here. So now the logic that I'm basically going to go with is that I'm going to take every single key from possible keys.txt, and I'm going to use those to encrypt this plain text 
until I find this ciphertext. And when I find that ciphertext, then I have essentially uncovered the secret key by way of brute force. Okay, so a couple things before we start our brute force. Um, I actually modified this function um, to take psych key as an input. We also need to make sure that we do the cycle uh, within the function itself or else it causes issues down the line. So now what we're gonna do is actually brute force this thing. And the way that we're gonna do that is open our possible keys.txt uh, and then read that line by line. Then what we're gonna actually do is, uh, is basically take that key uh, that we have on each line and we're going to encrypt our known plaintext. We're then going to compare the new ciphertext to the known ciphertext. And if those are equal, then we know that we found the right key. So I've added a little bit of a sleep function here. Uh, and then I'm also flushing the uh, standard output. And the reason I'm doing that is just to kind of tidy things up and make it, you know, actually drive this home so it takes more than, you know, a millisecond to complete. Um, but what I'm going to do is go over to terminal and basically just run that as uh, shown. So as you can see, here's our known plain text, known ciphertext. And it looks like we have actually brute forced the key successfully. Um, so you could see that I can do this over and over again, right? And it's actually selecting a key randomly each time. Um, it's encrypting all this stuff using that randomly chosen key. So we can run this a couple of times as well if we want to, just to kind of test. Um, but what I would like to do is, is take a third party Visioneer Cypher uh, website that basically we can copy our key into as well as our known plain text and make sure that we're getting the right result. And it looks like this is now going to be our ciphertext. So we of course go back and see that it does match up to our ciphertext. This basically tells us that we now have the key that can decrypt all of this stuff, right? So we don't actually know what this is. Um, based on the one known plain text uh, that we now have used to brute force the key, we can assume that it's actual ingredients for the In-N-Out Burger secret sauce recipe. Um, so what we're gonna actually do is create a decrypt function that will take our key and then basically walk us back from ciphertext to plain text. So essentially what I've done is I have copied over the vig encrypt um, function here and then I basically just modified the name to vig decrypt. By and large, uh, they're very similar. The only big difference, and I mean it is the difference, uh, is that when we're actually talking about the rotation amount for characters when we're decrypting, we're actually going to subtract that number um, that we were using to encrypt from the number of characters in our alphabet, which of course is 26. I have hard-coded our known ciphertext, which I got uh, here as the first line from our um, previously encrypted uh, instructions. And so I used the key that we found when we previously ran this, and I just uh, basically just used the big decrypt function uh, with that known ciphertext and our found key, and you see that it does decrypt that to In-N-Out Burger secret sauce recipe. So if I wanted to test this, right, I could essentially go and take our next line and hard code that, um, which is this right here, and I will do that. And I will save this and rerun it. So you can see that this is starting to uncover the actual ingredients for the secret sauce recipe. Uh, in this case, it is half a cup of mayonnaise. Um, so if I wanted to actually add this to the end of our vigbreak.py, so I can basically do all of this in one file, um, I could do that pretty easily. What I would want to do is start to uh, basically append this to a list of ciphertext, right? So now I'm just going to go ahead and iterate through that, right? So for item in all cipher text. Um, then I will go ahead and I need to actually copy this in, right? I will copy this function in. I'll just put that under vig encrypt. I need to actually set this as the known key, right? So known key equals the nothing for now, but then I'll set it here. Known key equals item. 
So that's after the brute force is in com it has uh, completed. And then I'll put this as known key and I'll change this to item. So I'm gonna change that quit to a break because we don't need to actually uh, continue once we find the key. And then I will run that again. All right, so as you can see, we have successfully decrypted our uh, ciphertext using the key that we were able to brute force. Um, I hope that this has been informative for you, and I look forward to doing more applied cryptography videos here in the future.